Hi guys. It is a lovely moonlit, hopefully soon to be rainy, so they say. Summer night, it is a September night as we wrap up the summer of 2022 on Labor Day weekend. It is Saturday, September 3rd, 2022. Are you going to come join us? Rascal, are you coming up or not? Alright, we have we have our a crowded table again tonight. This is, I guess, uh, Sister Rascal is going to become a regular member of the of the Chronicles of the Collapse. So it is Saturday night, September third, and we're having a busy weekend here at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm Airbnb Hip Camp, and uh, so we're just going to have a short but sweet. Uh, <laughs> Kind of a strange story coming out of Fortune Magazine. Fortune Magazine, a uh, little bit tongue-in-cheek. Fortune is usually, I think, a big fan of Elon Musk, but they're having a little fun with Elon. Take it away, Fortune Magazine. Elon Musk might have it backwards when he talks about the big threat to civilization. Do you think so, that Elon might have it backwards? Yes. You have it backwards? Okay. What is up with Elon and Fortune Magazine? There is a new fun or tragic chicken or the egg scenario for the modern era. Is the world doomed because people are having fewer kids or are people having fewer kids because the world is doomed? Uh, well, it's a little bit of both and, uh, well, it's none of the first, a little bit of the second. The world is doomed because people are having too many kids. But anyway, uh, just in case the editors of Fortune magazine do not realize why the world is doomed. But anyway, they're just having some fun. So I'm not, I'm not going to be the little Debbie Downer uh, spoiling their party. Okay, we're going to start again. There is a new fun or tragic chicken or the egg scenario for the modern era. Is the world doomed because people are having fewer kids? No. Or are people having fewer kids because the world is doomed? <clears throat> no less an authority than Elon Musk, who became the world's richest man in large part because of his promise to defeat global warming with the aid of super slick electric cars is now convinced there are not enough kids being born. Billionaires, like the rest of the population, love to foresee catastrophes. And sometimes, as in the case of billionaire Bill Gates, with the airborne pandemic prediction, they are right. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the recent spate of worries about underpopulation is a contrast from the days of 2009 when Gates and other billionaires, you know, talk, you know Ted Turner, my favorite billionaire who has five children, were worried about overpopulation being society's downfall. But there is very real evidence that they, and I don't, I've read this sentence several times and I'm not quite sure what they're talking about, but there is very real evidence that they all, you know, including Musk and Gates, who have opposite ends of the spectrum on it, have it backwards. So if, if, if two camps are totally opposite in their claims, how can both 
camps have it backwards. I'm a little bit confused by this sentence, but I guess what they're saying is they're not so much backwards as wrong. And here is the thesis of this short essay in, in uh, Fortune. The kids of today are not looking to have their own children. They are too worried about climate change. Hmm. <clears throat> Musk took to Twitter last weekend to repeat one of his f familiar refrains about demographics. Quote, population collapse due to low birth rates is a much bigger risk to civilization than global warming. Well, if you want to come be part of this rant, come over and be part of the rant, but you can't just be ranting from over there in the corner. Are you coming over to help them with the rant or not, Russell? <clears throat> the same week Reuters quoted Musk as saying, and again, I already had a rant about this, uh, agreeing completely with Elon Musk on this one, realistically, I think we need to use oil and gas in the short term because otherwise civilization will crumble, clarifying that he is still committed to the EV future, but sees that as decades away. But <clears throat> what if Musk has it backwards? And the despair over global warming is a major problem contributing to the lack of children. So, three cheers for, let's have a, a big hand for global warming. For global warming uh, doing its part to convince humans, y y you know, to breed fewer humans. You go global warming, and we need more global, we need Enough global warming to convince everybody to stop having kids. Musk himself has a famously large family with nine children confirmed to date, but climate anxiety increasingly appears to be a major factor for many millennials and Gen Zers pushing back their choice to have kids. About 39% of individuals aged 16 to 25 globally reported being, quote, hesitant to have kids because of climate change, according to a survey of 10,000 young people by the Lancet. That's that medical journal over there in England, I believe. It appears to be, meaning climate change, appears to be the source of an existential crisis making many younger generations decide they are not looking to have children. But it's not all about the climate. In 2018, the New York Times surveyed 1,858 Americans aged 20 to 45 and found that almost a quarter of them said, said they had or expected to have <coughs> fewer children than they originally planned. <coughs> and that was, of course, before the corona panic. Financial anxiety was a chief deterrent to having kids as those surveyed cited the expense of child care in raising a kid, an issue that Elon Musk is able to circumvent due to his massive net worth. But other concerns followed. About a third, 33%, we're not having kids because of their anxiety regarding climate change. To be sure, both climate... Now, now this is where I, ha I had to read this story several times. To be sure, 
both climate change and underpopulation pose problems to the future of human civilization and, of course, by extension to the global economy. And I have, under, yes, underpopulation does pose a problem to the human civilization and, and certainly the global economy for the simple reason that the global economy and the civilization that's grown out of it is 100% dependent on an ever-increasing, you know, uh, infinite uh, growth on a finite planet. That is the backbone of the global industrial economy, which in turn is the backbone of civilization. You pull out the, the backbone and civilization will be flopping around and the planet will be saved. They're not talking, they're carefully not talking about the non-human resonance of this planet the collapse of the global industrial economy and the collapse of civilization that will be, uh, you know, encouraged by underpopulation. You know, I mean, dude, dude, this, is, this is real rocket science. Anyway, getting back to the story. <clears throat> All right. To be sure, both climate change and underpopulation pose problems to the future of human civilization and, of course, by extension to the global economy. For, the, for instance, the University of California at Davis found that about 22% of countries globally have already experienced economic contractions linked to climate change. While in China, the population is slowing at a faster rate than originally projected, and the U.S. has an aging population that is putting off having kids. A study from Deutsche Bank in 2019 found there are more people alive now who are 65, I guess, you know, 65 or older than under the age of five right now. A challenge for businesses hoping to hire the working, the workers of tomorrow, and not just the workers, but more importantly, the uh, consumers to buy their planet-eating crap. But the United Nations has countered Musk's anxieties about too few bundles of joy by revealing that the world population is set to keep right on growing until 2100. Maybe then Musk might need to hurry up on the decades of transition away from oil and gas and towards electric vehicles, yes. If it really takes that long, you know, decades to go from fossil fuels to electric vehicles to save the planet, the damage of underpopulation could be truly irreversible by then. Okay, I have read that sentence, that's the closing sentence. I have read that sentence about ten times now. I have no clue, no clue what that sentence means. Okay, if it really takes that long, you know, to go from fossil fuels to electric vehicles, the damage of underpopulate of underpopulation could be truly irreversible by then. Again, no clue what that means. They're, I mean, they're talking about the damage of underpopulation 
you know, not to the planet. This is Fortune Magazine. Fortune Magazine doesn't give a damn about the planet. Fortune Magazine gives a damn about the global industrial economy and the civilization supported by it. So what they're talking about is the damage of underpopulation uh, to the global industrial economy and civilization could be truly irreversible by then. So whatever they mean by that comment, I hope they are correct. And I am glad to see we have 110 comments. We're just going to read one of them. Let's hear from Lassie. How would less humans it's, it's fewer humans. I don't know why people, and even, uh, you know, educated, intelligent people do not understand the, the grammatical difference between less and fewer. That less and fewer have just become interchangeable as we assassinate the king's English. The word is fewer humans, but... We all know what they're talking about. So I'm going to play copy editor here for Lassie. How would fewer humans mean the end? And, and so what Lassie, the problem that Lassie's having is, is, is Lassie is confusing the end of civilization and the global industrial economy with the planet. Lassie did not get that subtle shift, that you know, the subtle difference they were talking about. How would fewer humans mean the end? That is just so obviously wrong that a kindergarten kid could figure it out. Fewer humans means more resources to go around. So good. But it also means less innovation. That's the correct use of the word less. Less workforce and less need. So that is what they mean here. It may be bad. You know, fewer humans underpopulation may be bad for humans, but for life... For life, the animals, the earth, fewer humans is a good thing. That is, well, I had to clean up two grammatical mistakes. Lassie said less humans are a good thing. So we have two grammatical mistakes and less humans are a good thing. It's fewer humans is a good thing. But uh, anyway, I won't be too much of a grammar Nazi. And anyway, so if you enjoyed that story, they, they, uh, I'm, I'm not going to read this whole story. It was a fun one uh, from AP. Gen Z and millennials speak out on reluctance to become parents and this is a long article, you know, interviewing all of these Generation Zers. Uh, why they have decided not to have children. Here is 24-year-old L. Johnson. I don't think it's responsible to bring children into this world. There are already kids who need homes. I don't know what kind of world it is going to be in 20, 30, or 40 years, close quote. She's so sure, in fact, that she will soon have her tubes removed. Yes, other women interviewed cited climate change, overwhelming student debt, inflation, um... Uh, Whatever the motivation, they play a role in dramatically low birth rates in the U.S. All right. So we have a dropping birth rate. 
Hallelujah. Uh, here is these a 29 year old. Uh, just with the economy and the state of the world and just thinking about the logistics of bringing children into the world, that's really when we started to have our doubts. Yep, yep, yep. And then, of course, they talk about just the price of raising these little brats. Uh, you know, just one more uh, reason. Uh, let's see, there's one that I really loved in here, this quote. Uh, fears about climate change have cemented the idea of living without children for many. Uh, this is, I don't know how old this woman is. Now, with increased wildfires, droughts, heat waves, all of a sudden it is becoming real that, okay, this is happening during my life. And what is this going to look like during the time that my children are alive? Uh, but my favorite one, let's see, do I want... Uh, I want to save... Uh, here are my two favorite quotes. Uh, here is Danny Lynn... Murphy, not sure how old Danny Lynn is, uh, the practical realities of a child kind, kind of suck. Yes, they do. The practical realities of a child kind of suck, but I think my favorite one was this is 23 year old Emily Shapiro from good old New York City quote they meaning children they're sticky they're sticky I could never imagine picking up a kid that is covered in ice cream I'm a bit of a germaphobe I don't want to change a diaper if I did have one, I wouldn't want them until they're in like sixth grade. I also think the physical earth is not doing so great, so it would be unfair. Yes. <laughs> if I did have a kid, I wouldn't want them until they're in like the sixth grade. Yeah, then you get to deal with puberty. But anyway, guys, I notice I have had two more messages from Airbnb. People desperate for finding a place to uh, camp for uh, Labor Day. So I have to uh, get a lure going on at 11 o'clock Saturday night trying to figure out whether we can pack more people into Bugs in a Jar Farm. Speaking of packing people into Bugs in a Jar Farm, the Doomer Shindig kicks off in 11 days. Anybody wanting to come uh, join the Doomer Shindig, send me an email at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and we'll figure out how you can do that. Love to see you come join the party. Bye, guys. Nice little dog. You have to go answer two more emails from people.